Hey Trooper Light. Um, this is a uh, my video response to your your comment. Uh, basically, what I, I thought you were asking was um, just to kind of give a, a a better overview of what was actually going on between here the the NES input controls or the NES input ports and to the power player. Um, so here we go. Uh, let me start off by saying, uh, looking back at it, I I got an oscilloscope. Uh, since I did this project, and I was actually able to um, clock these these pins on here, and it turns out that pretty much this this whole part right here is useless. <laughs> uh, I I'll explain why. Um, but what's pretty much going on is the NES controllers work off of uh, their simple shift registers. They got eight byte. They got eight bits. Um, each bit represents a button on the controller. So what you have on a shift register is a clock, a latch, and a data line. So what I have here is I have three latch clock and latch clock and data lines coming into the uh, Arduino driver board, which um, is is set for each controller. So I've got the the three pins there and the three pins over there. Now those are coming into the Arduino, which I've written the program. Um, it's in the instructable. I've written the program to read that data and reinterpret it into parallel data. So basically what happens is the Arduino will resend out its data to this um to the TLC fifty nine forty chips. And uh these are these are Texas instrument chips, which uh I think I mentioned this but uh here they are, the TLC fifty nine forties. I got um samples from Texas Instruments. They have a program set up where you can get samples. I was able to get five of them for free. So it works out good. Um and they're a good chip for this because they actually sync their current to control LEDs, um, so they connect them to ground variable, uh, and that's good because the way these uh, the, the power player worked was it would short out or it would connect its buttons to ground whenever you would press them. So and that, that turned out good. So what happens here is this chip will output its data through these eight pins here and these eight pins here, and these go to both the these quote unquote chips that I just thought were like magic um i didn't really I didn't really know, and I didn't wanna really i couldn't really tell if they were shift registers or not, so I just assumed that they were just a chip, and I just kind of rewired them and relogiced it based on the circuit board from the original system so this chip here was uh i believe it was from the actual power player controller, the player one controller, which is actually the system too um and then this one over here is the player two controller chip. So what I did is I took uh I looked back at the circuits and I was able to rewire in all these eight buttons. These eight wires are the ones that are going in place of like the buttons on the original controller. Okay. So the data that's coming out of this chip uh goes into the the traces from the original buttons. And then what happens is you got your three latch clock latch clock and data. I keep doing that. Um, coming off of there and back into the the main motherboard or whatever you want to call it of the power player. So and then down here it's the same thing for the player two, comes in and goes into the uh, original pins or whatever you want to call them on the uh, power player. So uh, like I said, what we could have probably done if I had an oscilloscope back then is I could have just uh, mapped map these out and measured them, and I could have realized that. Oh, that's basically just taking um serial or uh, shift register data. So in the end, I could have just went right here to uh over here actually and just completely skipped all this. But um you know, it was a good learning experience and I'll tell you it was a pain to solder this stuff. I had to um I didn't have my uh Radio Shack solder station back then. I just had a, a simple Radio Shack twenty dollar soldering iron which was, um, it was a challenge, um, but, I mean, I did learn a lot from, uh, soldering with that thing, so, uh, that's pretty much it. So, this is actually the first one that I built, um, and I did start working on a second one down here. Um, and this second one I was going to sell, um, but I never actually got it working. The Player 2 doesn't actually work, it, it has this stupid problem, I don't know what's up with it. But um, I built this one off of a Yobo NES clone, um, and it, it turns out that it's a lot, lot simpler because 
he, number one, it came with ports, so I didn't have to buy those separately. Um, and it, it was a lot more easier to interface. I didn't have to do any of this. Uh, and I turned out that I didn't have to do this really anyway. But, um, I don't know. It takes up a lot more room. If I cracked this one open, it would take up uh, probably 25% less room. So, um, maybe I'll get this one working. I don't know. But I haven't been able to yet. Um, I got a couple other projects. So, I hope this helps, Trooper Light. Um, if you have any more questions, please comment, and I'll see what I can do. So, uh, thank you.